So if you're, if you're familiar with starting strength, you're familiar with the five step setup that I'm about to teach you. If you guys follow these five steps, you should end up with a pretty good deadlift, right? So do what I say, do nothing more, do nothing less, and things should work out. Now, kind of why we deadlift, the purpose of the deadlift, Jeff mentioned a little bit, right? Like why would you not bounce your deadlift off the floor? That's a little philosophical, but it depends on, you know, what you think the purpose of the deadlift is. And for us, the purpose of the deadlift is to get good and strong at lifting something from a dead stop. In the squat, we have momentum, right? It's a long range of motion. You're going down, you're going up, and you're using the muscles of your body to bounce up out of the bottom. We're not using the bar itself to <laughs> bounce it off the floor, right? And, and uh, make progress like that. So we're trying to train, get strong at a dead stop. Um, some other common uh, concerns about the deadlift, you know, the internet might say deadlifts are bad for your back. They might say the risk to reward ratio for deadlifts makes it uh, a pointless exercise in the weight room. But if you have back pain, like most humans do, <laughs> you need your back to be strong. You need it to be resilient. You need it to be tolerant. It shouldn't, you, you shouldn't go move a piece of furniture in your house and, you know, tweak your back or, uh, you know, have to even do a deadlift and, and tweak your back on the first day. Like you, your body, the, the way to make it resilient is to load it, right? And load it incrementally. So if you were at 105 last time, then we'll probably go to 110 today, if not even more. Uh, but okay, now we can get into the actual process here. Step one, with the stance, that's pretty narrow, about hip width apart. Your toes are gonna be pointed out about 10 degrees. So you can point your toes in a little bit more and bring your feet closer together. With this stance, we're going to do step one, and that is to approach the bar until your shins are one inch away from the bar. All right, step back just a hair and narrow your stance. Okay, what we're trying to do with step one, we referenced it in the other lifts, we're trying to get the bar over the middle of your foot. This is what's going to set you up for success on a heavy rep. All right, if the bar is over your toes or behind the middle of your foot, that's going to make it deviate from that vertical bar path. Right? A, a vertical bar path is the most efficient way to lift a heavy weight. If it ever deviates from that, you're either making it harder than it needs to be for yourself, or if it's heavy enough, you'll just outright miss. Right? When it gets to heavy weight, that's when it's really sensitive to those deviations. So we have to make sure that you're set up in the right spot so that uh, uh, the bar path is correct. Now this also means during the rest of these steps, you cannot move the bar. You cannot roll the bar around because that's going to undo what you just did here. Step two keeping your legs stiff. You're not going to bend your knees a bunch yet. Keeping your legs stiff, you're going to bend at the waist and grab the bar just outside your legs. Step three, you're going to bend your knees until your shins gently touch the bar and you're going to poke your knees out until they touch your arms. Step four, you're going to look 10 feet out in front of you and you're going to squeeze your chest up until your back is flat. Step five, you're going to drag the bar up your legs and stand up tall. Simple. All right, now look down at your feet and put it down over midfoot exactly where it started. Now you're gonna let go and step away. Now how you put the bar down is important too. It needs to go down over midfoot, right? It's really common for people to bend their knees a bit too much and let the bar ramp down in front of the middle of the foot and then it ends up over your toes and then you drop your hips too much and you're out of position for the next rep. So also be mindful of how you're putting the bar down, making sure it's going down to the right spot. And during this initial uh, teaching method, your coach will have you step back after the first few reps, just so you can drill those steps in and then we'll start stringing them together. All right, so let's do it again. Let's go through all five steps. I'll talk a little less as, the, uh, as you get more used to it. Step back a hair. All right, go ahead. Grip, shins to bar. Now here, before you squeeze your chest up is when you'll take the breath. So take a breath in, squeeze your chest up, eyes out, and push. At the top, your shoulders are back, knees are locked, hips are extended, right? You're not cutting it short and stopping here and then putting it back down. You should be able to hang out here, all right? Now again, down over midfoot, let go, step away. All right, we'll just do one more like that and then we'll start stringing them together. Knees out. Cool. Okay, one last variable that I'm gonna add into step four. You need to squeeze your chest up until you pull the slack out of the bar. The slack is that click that you hear in the bar. This. It's more pronounced with iron plates 
but that click needs to come out of the bar before it comes off the ground. If you don't do that and you end up trying to yank the bar off the ground or jerk the bar off of the floor, it's going to end up pulling you out of position, right? And you're going to lose uh, the efficient position you need to actually be able to lock the bar out. So you need to smoothly push the bar, uh, uh, lift the bar off the floor. All right, so let's do one more rep here. Actually, let's do five in a row. All right, and on that first rep, make sure that as you squeeze your chest up, pulling the slack out of the bar, knees out, chest up, slack. New breath, chest up again. Oh, that was good. Building the tension in your arms and legs and between the bar, and then it comes off the ground. Two more. Can't believe you said 95 was gonna be heavy. You can power clean this. All right, you can relax. All right, that's it. Simple. Any thoughts or questions about the deadlift? I have a question. Yeah, what's up? Can you um, speak about your personal philosophy about sumo versus conventional? <laughs> oh man, I mean, I, I personal. think it's, <laughs> yeah, personal, yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's fine, personally. I mean, I don't think there's a difference, you know, in terms of... Because it seems like sumo wasn't a thing like 15 years ago when I learned to lift, and now everyone's pissed. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you could pull big weight sumo. I mean, my, sumo. my conventional is... Uh, it's closer to the ground, so it's easier. Your hands are between your feet, and your feet are wide. Yeah, it's easier in theory, right? I deadlift like 100 pounds more conventional than I do sumo, but because I don't so practice sumo, I don't, uh, or I don't train sumo, right? So I think that's what it comes down to. Like, if you train something more, you'll be stronger at it than the thing you train less, so. Like, so if I wanna be a power lifter, should I get used to sumo? Because if I train sumo, I'll lift more? Potentially, I mean, we don't know if you'll lift more sumo until we like give it a few good weeks of training, you know? Um, the biggest deadlifts in the world, world, all the world records are gonna be conventional. Cool. Yeah, there's some some uh, conventional, That's some sumo. Because I hate sumo. <laughs> oh yeah, no. Nah. My recommendation would be to tr to I think it, my personal philosophy is that conventional is the better strength builder, and then sumo might be a better display of strength. Mm -hmm. But I think that in right. somewhere in your programming, if you're an advanced trainee and you're getting ready for a powerlifting meet, there's room for both. Especially if you feel like you and your coach feel that you're going to pull more weight. Powerlifting, all of a sudden now it becomes not just training, it's a sport. So what matters is lift more weight. So what's gonna allow you to lift more weight? It, it kind of depends on the person. So I think you try both, and then if you, you come to that determination that uh, you pull more with sumo, I still think there's a place in your programming for conventional to build strength, because I think it uses more muscle mass and it's gonna, it's gonna drive an adaptation a little better, but. But in terms of building like strength for just day life stuff, conventional is. That's why we, that's why we choose it, yeah. Yeah, what's Question. up? Um, when I started deadlifting, I started noticing sensation in my back that was like a little different from the soreness I get everywhere else. Okay. I talked to a couple friends who were women who had started lifting and they seemed to have similar things. But like, how do you know the difference between bad low back pain? Yeah. Not during, but like the next day. Yeah. And just like, oh, I use my low back and I'm not used to using those muscles. I mean, yeah, it's up to you to distinguish am I sore just because you know, I had a hard training session or is it pain? And is there much of a difference? Like I'm still, you know, in pain because I'm sore. Uh, so I would say the duration, right? If it happens, not just after this workout, but after the next workout and the workout after that, or potentially it gets worse, then you might have something to like start changing training. Uh, but if it, if it's just a one-off after a session or it's just a little sore, then I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Okay. Yeah. You're going to wake up with a sore back whether you deadlift or not in a lot of cases. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Just like sometimes backs hurt, man. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't even pain. It's like, and it, it's tightness. Away, the, more, the more time that I lift, the less mm -hmm. it happens. So it yeah. seems like a mm -hmm. soreness kind of thing. Yeah. But it's yeah. just, it was weird. It's like tight and stiff. And I don't know if it's just like, I don't normally do the lower back workouts. So yeah. I think that's all it is. We but tend to like treat the lower, the back like it's like some different fit entity altogether. But if like you, did bicep curls and your biceps were tight in the next couple of days, you wouldn't be concerned, but lower back, we treat a little differently, but you know, the lower back muscles are muscles. We stress them, they recover, and then they adapt to handle heavier loads. And that's essentially what we're trying to accomplish, right? Yeah. Oh, Jeff, you had a question, yeah. 
Oh, uh, I heard some people like I've seen use straps. When should a lifter start using straps? <sighs> yeah, you can use straps if uh, you don't plan on competing in a powerlifting meet, right? They're, uh, that's the only time they're not allowed. We recommend that you train your deadlift until you can't hang on to it anymore, and then you switch to mixed grip or you switch to hook grip, right? Being able to have a strong grip is something that we value. So if you don't have to wear straps, then I wouldn't wear straps. But if it gets to a point where like you're at the end of your linear progression, you've put a couple hundred pounds on your deadlift and you, you want to wear straps now, that's okay. Uh, they're mainly useful for accessories or variations rather. So if you're doing a rack pull, that's much heavier than your typical deadlift. That would be a good time to use straps. Or if you're doing Romanian deadlifts, which are another variation of the deadlift, that'd be a good time to use straps. Um, so yeah, if you, we, we recommend, not using straps if you don't have to, but no, nothing against it. We're gonna, I think what our, our main go-to is a hook grip, unless we've had lifters in here who are like, I'm a surgeon, these are my money makers. I don't wanna put my thumb between the fingers in the bar or whatever, and then it's like, okay, well, yeah, throw straps on, you know? Your goal should be, like we're teaching you now, like you're just, just like if you were going to a monkey bars, right? It's a double overhand grip. And that's what you guys are all going to do today. And our goal is that you get to a strength level where that fails you, right? It's not, it doesn't mean your deadlift's over. It just means, all right, we get to try a different grip or straps and there's options. So that's a good thing that you get to that point. You want to get to that point. <laughs>